the talk has slightly changed since I wrote it <laughs> while I was writing it. So thankfully Barry did some of the environmental stuff that affects our car as well as the schoolhouse. So basically what I'm going to be talking about instead is the scientific methods that we had to employ at Starcar during the analysis of the animal bone um, and how they actually helped to um, further highlight the special relationship between hunter-gatherers and red deer at Starcar. <coughs> so, Starcar, <laughs> it's on the edge of a paper like Flixen, don't really need to do this, I was already doing it. This is, some of the ex this is the extent of the excavations that we conducted um, from 2006 to 2015, including Clark's trenches and some of the structures obviously on the dryland and the um, workwood in the um, wetland. This is what it looks like from the air, lovely, beautifully clean and tidy as you see. Um, so this is the animal room. So um, we actually found 2,414 specimens of animal bone, um, 1,925 from excavation and 489 from um, flotation, some of which was burnt as you can see. Um, these are some of the breakdown of the species. So we found 16 species, 12 of which had already been identified um, by Clark. Four were new that we found um, during our excavations, which were wildcat, field vole, um, pike and perch. And as you can see, um, we did have a lot of um, unidentified fragments. Um, but the most important thing to note here is the amount of red deer that we found really does outweigh a lot of the other um, species. So, um, red deer are clearly important to Mesolithic people. Most of the artefacts that we find at Starcar were made from red deer antler and bone. As you can see, the um, barb points. In total, we found 227 barb points at Starcar, and this is including Clark's ones. Um, they also found these obviously famous antler frontlets. Um, 21 were found by Clark, um, and um, I think we, we found 12, I think it was. 12. <laughs> so that's actually 90% of um, Europe's frontlets were actually found at this site. So clearly they're a really important artefact, and it really does highlight, um, again, that red deer really did have play an important role in some ways, either as in religion or a hunting gear, to the people at Starcar. So... Some of the remains that we found from Starcar um, were beautiful, obviously, lovely art. This is one of ours. Um, but uh, after Clark's excavation, Starcar obviously became famous for great preservation and the amazing artefacts. Um, but we had a few issues with our preservation. When we went back to do um, uh, excavations, this is obviously one of the better preserved material. Um, but this is some of the stuff I had to deal with on the dryland. As you can see, it's very desiccated. It's crumbly, flaky. Basically, I had to do quite a lot of a, a identification in the ground. Um, it was quite difficult. Roots growing through it, broken students digging it. I mean, what can you say? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was quite difficult to do. Um, and on the wetland, this is some of the material I had to deal with on the wetland. Um, the antler and bone, some of it was found to be completely compressed and very leathery-like. Um, and this was thought to be the result of pink peat shrinkage because of draining the fields by farmers. Um, some of the bones were found to be excreting jelly-like substances, like this beauty up here, um, and were really rubbery, and then others were found to be bloated, very rubbery, and the layers of bone had begun to delaminate, like this lovely thing here. And if Rose was here, she'd be able to tell you she smelt some of the bone and wish she hadn't. Um, so for further discussion of the preservation, please go to the monograph, I'm not going to go into it now. But obviously, um, this was quite a challenge for us, well, for me. Um, to try and get all the data I needed to out of this material. So we really had to try and come up with different methods to try and help uh, get the data out of this material. So one of the methods we utilised was zooms. I'm not going to read the definition, but this is lovely provided by Mike Buckley. Um, and in total, we um, analysed, well, through zooms, 280 bones from 2007 and 8, and 60 from 2013 and 14. Um, yep. So, um, and it was possible to get a further 178 identifications from those bones um, that otherwise we would have had to have categorised as unidentified. Um, so we were able to get these to either species, genus or family. Um, and using this method, along with um, spatial um, patterning when putting this into GIS, we were actually um, able to, to get some interesting patterns um, of distribution from this material. 
um, and it helped us to further ID this horrible, crumbly, or gooey bone, which was great. So we were actually able to get more information from this material than we thought we would if we hadn't used this method. So the other thing that we um, did to try and get more information from this material was isotopes. Thank you, thank you Sophie. Um, <laughs> one of the things we looked at was the dog, because we found a complete dog burial, or dog um, body in the lake, which is obviously very interesting. I'm not going to go into that here, but what I'm concentrating on is the red deer, and the reason why we actually sampled red deer for isotopes. So we found um, a um, the spread of red deer remains in the detrital wood scatter, which would have been on the edge of the lake in shallow water. Um, excuse me, dry. <laughs> so, uh, what was I saying? Sorry. Yeah, so we found them in the water. Um, during excavation, it was noted that um, these remains seemed to represent, or there seemed to be enough elements to represent at least one deer. Um, but it wasn't until identification analysis and post-ex, combined with the spatial patterning in GIS, that we actually um, started to see some interesting patterns of deposition. Um, the <laughs> the um, yeah, so interesting patterns in deposition. Um, we found. Um, sorry, I've got out. I'm panicking now. Sorry. There we go. Um, yeah, so interesting patterns in definition. So we found um, uh, these remains are actually laid out, seem to be laid out in an some sort of anatomical position, which was really interesting. And also, when we further looked into it, there appeared to be um, um, the actual um, semi-articulated em elements. Thank you. Uh, semi-articulated elements. Um, as you can see here, scapula humerus ulna. The radius went a bit awry there, but carpals and semi-carpals. Um, so as you can see, it seemed to be quite an interesting pattern um, of um, deposition of this deer being in the lake. Um, to begin, we thought, well, maybe it was a whole animal that was just died or in the lake or had been um, killed and then placed into the lake. Um, but then we started to realise that, you could, I don't know if the eagle eyed of you can see, we seem to have several left limbs. One limb, left limb, left limb, no, but and only one right limb. So clearly it's not just a deer that died. Um, so it looks as though separate body parts were actually deposited in an attempt to maybe reconstruct or reconstitute a red deer in the lake. Um, this is really obviously really interesting and it's um, never really been heard about before in the Mesolithic, in um, Britain at least, in, or in Europe. So an attempt to discover whether this was actually, um, some of these remains were all from the same individual, or whether it was actually from several different individuals and then placed within the lake. Um, we did isotopes. Thank you, Sophie, again. Oh, go back. Yeah, so these are the isotope results. As you can see, we, I don't, we um, looked at several different elements, including a frontlet that was close by, um, to try and see if they were related, um, or we could tell with different individuals. Um, these are the results. So basically, unfortunately, we couldn't actually see um, any clear difference between the, um, the uh, results to show us that there were different individuals or indicate different individuals. But um, this data was actually comparable to the material that had been um, uh, tested previously by Schulting and Richards. And there was... Um, and um, it was also enabled us to compare this, this uh, our data to other um, to uh, other deer, red deer from this period, so we could get a bit more of a uh, wider landscape view of the animals and see whether they fit in with some of the other um, red deer from this period. They did, which isn't surprising. Deer have quite a limited <laughs> diet, <laughs> um, but obviously it allowed us to look like slightly further afield than just star cast specific and look at a landscape and wider um, pattern of uh, deer in the, the whole period of time. So, although uh, the creation of composite animal is previously undocumented from Mesolithic sites, hunter-gatherers obviously seem to have a special relationship with animals. Um, deer, elk, obviously we've seen, do seem to be placed into lake deposits um, 
like Lundy Mosey, where the elk were placed in bags and then into the um, bog, um, and dog burials, which Amy's obviously done lots of work on in Skirtholm and Sweden. Um, and we also find that animal remains do get incorporated into graves, and quite a lot of those tend to be red deer as well, like um, teeth, perforated teeth, barbed points, and um, bits of um, bone as well. Um, <coughs> and then also, obviously, um, the creation of the frontlets at Starcar is really, obviously, a really nice indicator of um, a special relationship that um, people have with deer. Um, and obviously Chantelle O'Connor has um, talked a lot about this in her Becoming Deer paper, and Amy Little has talked a lot about this in her shamanic costume um, paper as well. Um, but it's really interesting to see that um, the different types of um, activities that the Mesolithic people are doing, but quite a lot of them seem to be with red deer. So this composite um, reconstruction deer is a new and um, interesting uh, feature to uh, Mesolithic behaviour at Starcar, but it reaffirms the unique relationship between humans and deer at this site. And that's the end. If you want more information, please go here. And that's us. <laughs> <laughs>